In 1547, the Grand Duke of Moscow Ivan, better known as Ivan the Terrible, proclaimed himself Tsar. A century and a half later, Peter the Great proclaimed Russia an empire. The rulers were changing, the country was changing, which was going through a difficult historical path to a great power. One of the largest empires in history has existed for almost four centuries. Huge territories, a variety of cultures, peoples and traditions, it is very difficult to keep under a single state administration, even for a short time. What dark, cruel secrets did the mighty Russian Empire keep in itself? What does the successor of Rome and Byzantium not like to remember? Despite the fact that many historians call serfdom soft slavery, it still was and remains a dark shameful stain on the history of Russia. At first, the serfs were simply tied to a certain area and were obliged to work for the landowner who managed this estate. By the 17th century, landowners were allowed to sell and buy them, which effectively equated serfs with slaves. For more than a century and a half, serfdom has existed in such an inhumane form. Of course, in fairness, it should be said that not all landowners were such tyrants. But serfs could be separated from their families, sent to the army against their will, and punished at their discretion. Even if one of them were dying, no one would really understand the reasons for his death. Serfdom was abolished in 1861. At that time, the population of Russia was almost 63 million people, of which at least 46 million were serfs. False Dmitri I even managed to be crowned in Moscow, although he was soon killed. False Dmitri II, in fact, posed as False Dmitri I, what an irony of fate, and gathered a huge Cossack army that ravaged the north. After the capture of his city, False Dmitri III received the nickname Pskov Thief, but was defeated and executed in 1612. In the 18th century, Emilian Pugachev organized a large-scale uprising, posing as the murdered Peter III. Another false psychiatrist showed up in Montenegro, which he ruled for five years until the Ottomans bribed a barber to cut his throat. There were several other impostors who called themselves Peter, including the founder of a powerful sect of eunuchs and one of the strangest religious sects Kondraty Selivanov. The largest religious schism in Russia occurred under Peter the Great. This happened because the then Patriarch Nikon decided to carry out a church reform, which was designed to bring the Russian church in line with the rest of Eastern Orthodoxy. It was decided that the sign of the cross should be applied with three fingers instead of two. Many flatly refused to accept this innovation. So there were old believers or old believers. The Russian state declared them schismatics and ruthlessly persecuted them. They were tortured, executed, and exiled. Most of the old believers decided that the end of the world, described in the scriptures, was approaching. As a result, a strange and very cruel custom was born, at the slightest suspicion of exposing the community of old believers, they gathered the whole village in the local church and set it on fire, burning themselves alive. All sorts of sects and cults began to flourish on the fertile soil of the religious schism. The variety was simply amazing, the whips, who staged crazy dances with songs and whipped themselves to show their contempt for the corporeal shell, the Molokans, who preached pacifism and rejection of everything mundane, founded communes in Siberia, the Dukabors, who abandoned the Bible in favor of their living hymn book. Many others. Eunuchs were especially strange and stood out from the general background. This sect considered carnal pleasures to be the main source of sin. They started practicing castration. Literally. Scopians cut off their testicles, and most often everything else too. The wound was cauterized with a red-hot iron. The women also had their genitals mutilated. In addition, men and women often cut off their nipples. Surprisingly, the sect was very rich and very powerful, and existed for more than a century. As Ivan the Terrible grew older, he became more and more immersed in persecution mania and paranoia. The illness and death of his beloved wife contributed to the mental deviation. I must say, the star's suspicions were not entirely groundless. The monarch chose very specific methods. He surrounded himself with commoners, whom he exalted and granted them lands. These mercenaries were called opportuniks. They wore black clothes and decorated themselves with severed dog heads as a symbol of the terrible fate that awaited all traitors. In fact, the opportuniks were the secret police of Ivan the Terrible. They searched, arrested, tortured and executed everyone suspected of treason to the Tsar. Most of all, the times of the Abraknina are famous for the ruin of Veliki Novgorod.
In 1570, the Prichniks broke into the city and killed more than 10,000 of its inhabitants. After that, the once powerful trade center never recovered. By the will of fate, Ivan VI became Tsar in 1740, when he was only two months old. A year later, his cousin Elizabeth overthrew him. By her order, the disgraced Tsar, who was still an infant, was exiled. Then, when he turned four, he was placed in solitary confinement. There he spent the next two decades of his life. He knew who he was, could read and write. Nothing else was allowed to him. There were no windows in his cell, Ivan had never seen daylight. The guards were ordered to keep quiet in his presence. The only thing the unfortunate man was allowed to own was a copy of the Bible. No wonder the young man went crazy. During his imprisonment, repeated attempts were made to free him and put him on the throne. All of them were unsuccessful. During the next one, in 1764, Ivan VI was killed by jailers. Theoretically, the Russian Tsar was perhaps the most absolute ruler in Europe. The only real deterrent to his power were the boyars. In practice, it was like a jar of spiders, where the power was given to the one who was stronger. Peter the Great, for example, experienced an armed riot as a child when angry Streltsy broke into the palace and killed everyone. Ivan the Terrible suffered from the boyars who poisoned his mother when he was only eight years old. Theodore II occupied the throne for seven weeks before he was strangled. Peter III was assassinated on the orders of his own wife, who then ruled for three decades and became famous as Catherine the Great. The son of Catherine, who began to carry out quite reasonable reforms, he restricted serfdom and the rights of nobles, began to change state policy, was deprived of life in his own bedroom. According to one version, he was killed by a blow to the temple with a snuffbox and strangled with a silk scarf. After that, one of the killers woke up his son with the words, It's time to grow up. Go and rule. After such shocks experienced in childhood, it is not at all surprising that many kings have become brutally paranoid. Ivan the Terrible and Peter the Great killed their own sons without regret. Torture was one of the ways to preserve and strengthen state power. The Russian emperors were not the only rulers in history who used this sure remedy. Everyone had their own sadistic preferences. Like any empire, especially of such impressive size, Russia could not boast of a social orientation. Periodically, some regions suffered from famine as a result of droughts and crop failures. It was not customary to talk about it. Also take some action. For example, in 1891, the Tsar simply forbade newspapers to cover this problem and even used the word famine. Of course, the problem still had to be solved. In the end, help was provided, but as a result of this holodomor, more than 400,000 people died. The most devastating was the famine of the early 17th century. In 1601, a volcano erupted in Peru. This caused a series of unusually long winters. Several lean years claimed the lives of two million people in the Russian Empire. At that time, it was a third of the entire population. The Tsar at that time was too preoccupied with the impending civil war to do anything. The chronicles of those years tell us about terrible things. People ate hay and did not disdain human meat. The discovery of America by Columbus led to the mass destruction of the indigenous population there. Something similar happened in the Far East, which the Russian Empire began to actively develop in the 18th century. Initially, traders paid attention to this region. Their target was precious furs. As taxes, they were collected from the local population. All the riots were brutally suppressed. As a result of one of the bloodiest clashes, the Cossacks burned 18 villages and massacred hundreds of people. The most effective weapons were not pistols and sabers, but diseases. Yakuts, Evanks and Aleuts were powerless against European infections. They died in whole villages. Mortality averaged more than 50%. Put likes, leave comments and subscribe. You won't hear such information anywhere else.